All right, so the Golden Gate Bridge, and we have this <clears throat> this equation. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. You can figure out your distance from the middle of the bridge and the height of the suspension cable. So uh, if you know the height, and I'm not sure, like obviously some places you could maybe like measure up there, but obviously up other places it's way, way up there. So it's kind of an interesting equation, but point is it says how far is the cable from the roadway when you are 200 feet from the middle of the bridge. That, that's more likely the use of this equation. I would just probably isolate y instead of x. In other words, it's easy to walk across the bridge and measure how far you've walked, 200 feet, versus calculating how high a cable is, or measuring rather, way above you. So it'd be easier to calculate that part. So basically substitute 200 for x and solve for y. <clears throat> they had a cross section of these cables. So I've only been there once, but we walked out onto it and it was cool. Very high above the water, like 200 feet, like taller than St. Mary's above the water. You could drive St. Mary's underneath there. Um, so, which is why people die when they jump. And there's signs all along there, like, don't do it, call this number. Why don't they have attachments? Maybe they do now. I don't know. This has been 20 years ago. Anyway, the, these, these cables, the ones that are suspending the bridge up here, they're this big around. They're very, they're cool. And they're made up of a whole bunch of cables that are like this big. So it just, it kind of looks like a beehive of a whole bunch of little cables, but like that big around. So, you know, every foot probably weighs like a ton or something. Huh? Okay. How do we solve for this Y value, the height of that cable above your head? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, now how do we do it? Okay. So multiply by that denominator. Huh? Well, in the interest of time, we have a lot to do today. So 010583. So point zero one zero five eight three times 200. So 2.1166. Okay, now what? Still working to get y by itself. Square, root. square to undo the square root. So we're going to square both sides. And on the right, we'll have y minus 200. And take that number and square it, so 4 point, let's go 4.48, and then add 200, so 204.48, and this should be feet, right? Yep. So that cable, when you're 200 feet away from the center, that cable is 200 feet above your head. This thing is enormous. Like, we don't have any bridges that even come close. So, thinking from the middle, if we walk either direction 200 feet, that cable is 204 feet, or so 205 feet above your head. And the picture kind of makes it look like that would make sense, right? It, it climbs pretty steeply after the middle. So, cool. Did anybody get there? Anybody get 204.48? So, being able to solve for a variable or just solve is going to be on your quiz coming up. So, if, huh? I don't know. 
Is it 220? Oh, is it 220? Yeah. Anyway, 225 then. 225. 225. So being able to solve, being able to get a variable by itself is actually what we're about to do now. Well, here in just a little while. So any questions on like where you went wrong, why it didn't work out? Okay, you're eating a peep. Arturo, are you with us? What are you working on back there? There you go. Alright. All right, so yesterday we got into composite functions. And I just want to review that, but also wanted to review solving. So here's, here's a quick question as a temporary review. How would you solve this one? Don't shout it out. Raise your hand when you can tell me. Ooh, I like immediate. That's awesome. How would, how would you solve it? Not what's the answer. Good, getting some more, keep going. Okay, those of you who have it, go ahead and say what you would do. I would not. So she suggested doing this. Or no. Like, no, no. Do you know how to do the fraction thing? Like, Except for we don't multiply, we take it to the power. To the power. So, to what power? Then we can multiply those, but only because we took it to the power. And then do the same thing over here to fifths power. So that's going to be x plus 8 to the 4 fifths equals x minus 10. Um, what do we do now? This one is kind of different. So basically, it's it's not that you guys are on the wrong track, but before I delete that, you kind of got stuck here, right? And why is that? If we try to get rid of that exponent, we, we basically just stick it over here. And then we're going to trade back and forth kind of idea. So we need to... Uh, be able to get rid of both powers at the same time, if we want to think of it that way. Or get rid of the denominator, at least. Does that make sense? So, how... I'm trying to think of how to word that, but... Is there a way to, to take each thing to a power, so each side, in a way that we can get rid of the denominator? Or at least keep this manageable, like we, you know, like we don't. Yeah. Well, this one is not rooted, right? It's to the squared. Alright. Well... Are you thinking over there, or are you just... Go ahead and talk. No. I want to hear. No. Why? Moving on. <laughs> I want to know. No, we're not. All right. <laughs> I feel like you have, you have the answer, and you don't want to say. No. All right, well, so when you run into a case where you feel like you're going to trade back and forth, the exponent back and forth... Um, 
we can take the, like for this, we said a second ago, x minus 10 to the 5 halves to the 2 fifths, because it gets rid of that one. But that's not, it's, that's typical, but not the only option, right? What I mean by that is, this makes the exponent go to 1, but just like usual, we can multiply or take it to a power that allows us to multiply. Go ahead. Could you maybe take it to like a power of like 2? Just 2? Yeah. Okay. Just like that and like that. Oh, it would like make the x plus a to the power of 4. Okay. So he's suggesting this. What if we just took it to the 2 to get rid of the because denominator, like, yeah, right, which is nice. Um, yeah, actually, actually like this is what he's saying. Then we would have x minus 10 to the 5th, but we have to do it over here. x plus 8 to the, to the squared also, which is to the 4th, okay? So, yes, you can do that. You can always take stuff in steps. And maybe it looks nicer without having the denominator, so the root part of it. Um, here, could we multiply these all out and combine like terms? And then have this fifth degree polynomial, right? Because this is gonna, this will, this right side would generate a whole bunch of terms with the highest degree being x to the fifth, and then over here again a whole bunch of terms with x to the fourth. Yeah, right. Right, and then we could combine all those like terms. We'd have a fifth degree polynomial. This is what we were talking about the other day. Is that what you were gonna bring up? Where we have to, if you chose to stop there, we would have. Synthetic division, 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 so you got to a quadratic, and we're not doing it all that, like that, okay? So, is that the only thing we can do? It's not that it's a bad, it's not wrong, it's just not the best option. I'm going to show the story. Well, I didn't mean to choose one where we got bogged down. So, because I really do, we actually need to focus on the um, function stuff today. So, just pausing here. Our plan is finish up function inverse and composite today, and then review. Probably we'll start the review today, Monday, and then quiz on Tuesday. Um, so, I have, it's kind of a fun. I mean, I'm showing you the paper like you know what it says, but I'm showing you so you know what you'll be doing. It's code breaking, it's called code creator, code breaker. So using the stuff we're about to talk about on inverses, you can create a code, like a legit code for a message. And so everybody's going to create one, and then we'll fold these up, fly them around, and you'll pick up a random airplane and decode the message that somebody coded for you. I'll do one too. And it's kind of putting a, a use to the inverse function stuff, okay? And this will count as, like, not, not the same points as a quiz, but it will count as assessment points. So it's kind of like doing a bonus is really what it will amount to. Because I'm not, it's not like I'm going to grade everything real hard. It's just, so that answer your question? So that's why I wanted to save Wednesday. The quiz is, this, this isn't it, um, but it's basically the same. This is your review. So you can see it's pretty short. So, so is it the quiz only going to have the graphing and all that stuff and then basically what? It'll have solving and the function stuff, actually. That's what's on there. Solving and the function stuff? Yeah. Like, so let's let's table this 
because I don't want to get into something that's going to confuse you, maybe confuse you when we're... You had the right strategy. The reason I pulled this up is because I wanted you to say, take it to the two fifths. Okay? I should have looked a little closer when I was passing by at the fact that this is a little more involved. So we'll come back to it. Um, and yesterday we left off at composites. We need to take some notes on functions. So let's pause there. We need to take some notes on functions and then talk to inverse. Okay? And do a little practice with it, I guess. So grab those notes. Find this example if you can, please. We also did that one. So either one, just find it. Okay. So we reviewed that a function is a relation that uh, creates one output value for each input. And so graphically, you can't, the vertical line test or the vertical line can only touch the thing once, not twice or more. So then we came in and said, hey, a composition of any two functions is just substituting one inside of the other and then simplifying. I also mentioned that we could do a composite of more than two, so three, four, whatever. The way these can get kind of confusing is when your functions are a little bit harder to work with, like maybe a radical, maybe a rational exponent or something. Otherwise, the concept is fairly mild, I think. You just take one function and stick it for x in the other function. Then we looked at evaluating a function. Actually, we didn't get to that yet. We left off right there. So let's talk evaluating. Uh, this is an example of where something could get maybe a little bit deeper, right? Where we have to be careful when we square. What does it mean? Like this one says, f is a quadratic, g is linear. So f of g means plug the linear in for each x. And now we're ending up squaring 2x plus 3, which means what? Yeah, so times it by itself. So 2x plus 3 times itself. So on this one, on, when we expand that out, we'll get 4, 6, 6, and 9. So 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Okay. Now we need to combine all our like terms. And then we'll be done. Remember, we're not solving this. We're not trying to find the value of x. We're just trying to uh, create a new function. So 12x plus 6 more x's. And then 9, 9 is 18 minus 10 is 8. So that is f of g of x. So you can see that's a little more work. But the concept, the root concept, is the same. So how do you feel about composite stuff? At least creating them like that. Doing okay? okay? You probably noticed yesterday on some of these, like, no, no, not that one. F of G, and then it has this negative 3 there. What does that mean? What do you think? F, F of G of negative 3. That's how we would say that. What do you think that means? Hmm? Yeah, so plug negative 3 in for x. Okay, now you have two options. If, if you just did a problem like this straight off of OpenStax, you have two ways that you can do it. You could plug negative 3 into g, and then plug that result into f. So that would look like this g of negative 3 equals 3 times negative 3 plus 2. So nine, negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7. And then plug that into f. 
which means negative 7 squared minus 4. So 49 minus 4 is 45. So f of g of negative 3 is 45. Does everybody see what I did? If I just, or whatever problem just asks you for, uh, for you to evaluate at a point, that's what that is, you can do it that way. You can also find the composite, which is what we did here. No, I made that one up. Never mind. We did it. Never mind. We haven't done this one yet. You can also find the, the plane composite and then plug negative 3 in once. So either one. Um, I will tell you that when I have you do these, mostly I will ask you to just do the composite first and then plug numbers into it so that I know you can do both. Okay? So remember again also that we're not going to do this circle notation. I want you to do the, just the parentheses version. So here's what I want from you. The next one says g of f of negative 1. And I can make this bigger, but I want you to do that and just double check your understanding, please. So take a minute. One step. So first I want you to find the composite. And then do um, negative 1. So find the composite first. Okay, so g of f, let's just find the raw <coughs> composite first. Remember to leave room. You want to think of it that way. So g of f of x is what golf, if you want to say golf, that's what that means. So leave room in g to plug in x, x squared minus 4. <coughs> then we need to simplify. So g of f of x is 3x squared minus 10. So minus 12 plus 2. Okay. Then g of f of negative 1. g of f of negative 1 means just plug negative 1 in for x. So negative 1 squared is what? Just 1 times 3. So g of f of negative 1 is negative 7. Oh, wait. <clears throat> what? Oh, that answer was did not do that step. Which step? The first step. Well, after all of it. Okay. Well, again, we could have... We could have plugged negative 1 in to f. Negative 1 squared minus 4 is yep, negative 3. Yeah, and then plug that in into g, yeah, which would be 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9 plus 2. Either way. But I'm telling you that if I tell you to do, if I ask you to do this, then it's nice to just plug it in once instead of twice. Okay. Okay. If I don't tell you you need to find the composite, you can just do what you did. Okay? I don't know if you noticed at the top, it said f of f. What do you suppose that means? Yeah, just take f and plug it into itself. So notice what would happen then. <clears throat> if I asked you to find the composite, we're plugging a quadratic into a quadratic. So what should we have after that? A squared inside of a squared. Uh oh. This is current unit stuff. What's going to happen with those x squareds? Here, just imagine if it didn't have the negative 4. So I'm plugging x squared into x squared. So what do we do with those? Yeah, we're going to have a fourth degree polynomial, okay? In that case, too, I would not do the composite. I would just stick stuff in like Andrew did. Just plug numbers in and solve first. <clears throat> All right, let's write some notes on compositing. Well, and functions in general.
Then we can talk inverse functions. It's not that this is entirely unrelated, by the way. I mean, you can see that we're using skills that we've developed in this unit. It's something you can use. So this is a relation that assigns, and this word is important, Exactly one <clears throat> output, which is y, for each input, which is x. So one output for each input. And we can draw a little graph to show what is and is not a function looking thing. So don't forget your vertical line test. Oh, come on. My arm feels like it's not working. It doesn't respond to my brain. <laughs> well, I want to draw an arrow, and I draw something like weird mess. Okay, vertical line test again. If you can drop a vertical line and it only touches it once, then it's a function. Okay, that's in contrast to a non-function. So let's draw that. And if we have a vertical line test, it hits twice. Not a function. Uh, it has two outputs for each x. Alright, give me a second to catch up. Now that we kind of know what to expect for <coughs> what a function is, let's talk about evaluating a function, which is what we just did with plugging in like negative 1 or negative 3 or something. Evaluate just means to find a value, right? So if f of x is a function, then f of, well, let's just put one in. f of negative 3 means plug in negative 3 for each x and calculate the value. Just for fun, what kind of parent function would this one be that I drew? Close. That would go like this way. She said cube root. Remember this? It's cubed. That's why, well, or an odd power polynomial, right? Good. All right, next. Let's do composites.
So the idea behind this is to plug a function into another function to create a composite or like a new combination if you'd like to use that word. Do you not take much? Did I insult you, Andrew? Uh -huh. Did I insult you? Yes. Yes, you did. <clears throat> All right. So f of g of x means. <clears throat> excuse me. Plug the function g. Uh, you could write in parentheses like the equation into all x's in f and then what do we do after we plugged it in <coughs> then simplify now this is going to be important as we start to talk about inverses here in a few minutes because we're going to use this idea of composite to check if functions are inverse so it is important that you get it okay You could give yourself a little reminder. To leave room. And using parentheses. Okay? So leave room to plug stuff in. Would you like an example to put in here? Like just not a fully worked out one, but a fully worked out one. What? I just need that much extra help. You do? Yeah. Um, so again, we won't like fully simplify, but... But you can do that on your own. <coughs> I'm saying you can fully simplify. Like, that's not the concept here. Okay. No, you can't put your own examples in here. Okay, so notice leaving room, right? Leaving room for each G that I need to write in here. So G of X there, and then actually write the equation for G in both of those. So we did say all x's, don't forget to put them in everywhere. Okay, so that would be g of f, or excuse me, f of g, let's do g of f now. Leave room, this one we only have one x to plug into, so also if you would like on the quiz, you're welcome to use colored pencils or pens if it helps you to color code stuff. Alright, so that's composite. Are we good on composite? Okay. Keep your notes. We're going to do notes on inverse and then I'll show you them. Okay? I don't look mad. It's her. <laughs> What'd she say? This thing is slow. What the heck? 
We are out of pink notes. If you need more, get some orange ones. Okay. So guys, this will be the last topic that we talk about and for this unit, but also this is on your quiz and what we use for that code breaker activity. So this is kind of a big deal. It kind of gives purpose to being able to find a composite function, okay? And inverse functions are something that we use fairly often. So I think to solve and that kind of stuff. No, there's a stapler if you want to use it. It's actually a pink sheet. Oh. Awesome. Okay. What does inverse mean? Uh, we're going to, just real quick before I answer that, before you, thanks. We're going to do this slightly differently. I'm going to show you the concept for inverse, and then we'll go do some examples. Okay? What? What does inverse mean to you just as a general word? Yeah. Reverse? Does that make sense? Like that. Yeah. yeah, okay. But inside. Reverse inside. Reverse is like outside. It's inverse like Okay. Reverse is outside. That's right. Okay. Good. Good word picture. So basically it's the same idea. You've dealt with inverses lots of times, you just didn't know it. Where if you do something, an inverse undoes it, is the big idea. So two inverse functions undo each other. That's the goal, at least. So let's kind of give a big idea to this. I'm going to use that word, undo each other. To leave just x. Okay? It's kind of like digging a hole and filling a hole. Those are inverse functions. And we end up back to flat ground again. We have a notation, a new notation. Actually, you've seen it before, but probably didn't know what it was. So the, the way we show inverse functions, and it's kind of weird. Well, it will look weird to you. What would you, how would you read that before I tell you? How would you read what I just wrote? Yeah, like most, mostly we would say f to the negative 1, right, of x. But actually... So this is the in this is the notation we're going to use for inverse, but we don't say a negative one. We say f inverse of x. Okay. So that's huh? It is. I was about to show you that. Yep. Yeah, way to go, making a connection. So you, you have used this, assuming your geometry teacher showed you. So on your calculator, you, you did sine, cosine, and tangent in geometry. And then when you needed to find an angle, like sine, cosine, tangent used an angle to find side lengths. When you need to find an angle, the ones right above those were sine to the negative 1, cosine to the negative 1. But it actually, we say inverse sine, or inverse cosine. Okay? So that's how we'll notate our inverses. So start using that. Okay? So we know an inverse function undoes, inverse functions undo each other. We now know how to do an inverse, uh, or to show it rather. Um, let's write it this way. How to check, underline check for inverse. So how do we check if two functions are inverses of each other? And this is why, this is the section why we need composites, okay? So big idea, use 
composite functions. Okay? I'm going to write more, but that's the idea. Think about it. If I plug G into F and I get X, that means that F undid G and left me with the original value. And then same with the other. The thing is that you have to do both in order to prove. Okay? So maybe underneath this just put to prove, just so you know the wording. And you're not going to like write a proof like geometry. It's just going to show whether they're inverses or not. Okay? So plug one function into the other and simplify. So that's composite, right? And actually, I'm not going to write the word composite. Let's just write like f of g of x. It's not going to say f. Maybe it might. Maybe it uses another letter like a b. But just know that you plug one inside of the other. And then plug the second function into the first. So basically just reverse the process of g of f of x and simplify. So you're going to create two composites. Here's the check. This is the big idea. If both simplify to x, they are inverse. Okay? Please underline the word both. Because if one gives x, but the other doesn't, they are not inverse functions. Okay? Yeah. You were plugging them into each other, so like, you would plug like g of x into like the x's of all the f of x equation, and then you would plug all of the x's in the g of, g of x equation. X. Yes. Okay. And if they both, when you simplify them down, if you just end up with x, they are inverse. Okay. I'm going to give you a very easy example to show that. So, but I think you were saying it correctly. Don't expect any of this easy, but it's a conceptual example. Okay? If f of x is 2x and g of x is one half x. Hopefully you see where I'm going with this, but let's do it. f of g of x means two times one half, two times one half x, which equals x when we simplify. So that was f of g. I plug g into f. Right? Everybody follow? Plug G into F and got X when we simplified. 2 times a half is 1, right? Okay. Now let's do the other version. G of F of X means plug F into G. What's a half of 2? What's a half of 2? 1. So that's just x. Okay. So see how they both simplified down to x? Okay. Now, of course, your functions will be more complicated than these, but same concept. No? Just leave them like that? No, like, yeah, keep them all easy like this. So that, should I just take a picture of that and like leave yes. some blanks and your test is filling yeah, the blanks? Fill the blanks. Fill all the blanks. That'd be such like, like a dollar. Like 
take that, take that, yeah. and take that. Yeah. And you just fill in the rest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's actually smart. That's not smart. It is though. You should listen to your students. We you know what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So far so good? No, give me a second. Last thing. All right. Last thing is, how do we find an inverse? So if I just give you, let's say I just gave you 2x, and I said, what's the inverse of 2x? How would you find the inverse? We'll put an example for this, an actual worked out example. Because I'm, I'm on my last box of tissue, so. You gotta get five more. Huh? You gotta get five more. Yeah, I probably should. It's been a lot of crying lately. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at you. Yeah. Okay. So last last note. And all of this kind of stuff you'll we can do a couple examples before you just practice. So to find inverse functions. And this isn't a super long note. The concept here is actually super easy. Sometimes the work will be a little bit harder, like solving was, but the concept is really not. So let's do one of the kind where we do steps and an example at the same time. Are we good with that? OK. Uh, so step one, actually, let's write the example first. This is an easy one, but. So f of x equals 3x plus 4. So this is easy. Step 1, rewrite, and this is only if you need to, rewrite f of x as y. So we're going to say y equals 3x plus 4. Sometimes it will be given as y, and you don't need to do that. So. Maybe we should say if needed. <coughs> Step two. I'm telling you, you're going to be like, what? This is really kind of a simple concept. Switch x and y. So what would that look like? Yep. Plus four. x equals 3y plus 4. Literally just trade places with x and y. Wh wherever they are, just trade places with them. So if there's okay. like multiple x's, you yep. those are all the same to y. Yep. So let's include multiple um, places. Okay, step three. Sorry. This is the step that can be long, or could be more, it would not could, will be more work. Okay? Because it, it depends on what function you're trying to isolate or uh, invert. But we're going to get y by itself. Algebraically, I'll just move stuff around. Okay? So get y by itself. Again, like what if you had a radical? How do you undo a radical? Take it to the power. If you had a root, then, or excuse me, a rational exponent, you would take it to the reciprocal power. So step three is where the work of this process exists. Like these other steps obviously are pretty like done, right? But this is where the work exists and where you can make mistakes. So be careful with that. How do we get this y by itself? Subtract 4, and we'll get x minus 4 equals 3y, then what? Divide by 3. Divide by 3 on both sides. So y is now by itself. Okay. So your last step, step four, is to rewrite y 
as now f inverse of x. Okay, so because we, now we found the inverse function. So we need to rewrite y as f inverse to finish the process. So So that's our inverse function of the original. Yeah, done. So let's go try some examples. You read it up to apply. Yeah, I'll read it. So go ahead and write this. Verify that f of x equals 5x minus 1, and g of x equals x plus 1 over 5, or inverse function. So it's telling us to verify that they are. So grab your notes so you can call out a recommendation there. One thing that you need to understand, look up here. This is kind of how your notes will, or I mean your quiz kind of question will sound. It's not going to have this part, right? It's not going to say use composite. So you do need to know that. So let's, I'm going to color code, and I think that helps keep everything straight. So let's do f of g of x. So leave room, plug g in which is x plus 1 over 5, and then simplify. Well, what simplifies here on the right? Okay, 5 times 1 over 5, or 5 divided by 5, is just 1. So those cancel. And we're left with... We're left with x plus 1 minus 1. Now what? what are, like, what's the result of that? It's just x. Okay, so that's good. The first one gave us an x. That means we should proceed. What if you did this and this didn't give you an x? Do you need to check the other one? No. Stop and cry. <laughs> Yeah, if you try to, if you do a composite and it doesn't give you x, I would go back and double check, like make sure you didn't mess up, but if it doesn't for sure give you x, you don't need to check the other one, right? Because then you don't, you're just wasting work. Okay, so let's do g of f of x. Leave room. So g of f of x and simplify. So what simplifies in the numerator? Not, not yet. Oh wait. If you start canceling those fives, shame on you. Dang. You can't cancel fives when you have all these pluses in here. Those are those mistakes. Like it, you can have your notes that tell you how to find an inverse, but if you forget the fundamentals of math, that's where you mess mess up, right? So don't do that. What can you simplify in the numerator first? Do you see any reason to have these parentheses here? No. Why did I put them there? Because you plugged it. Yeah, just to show that I plugged in f in there, right? But they don't do anything. So isn't this just 5x plus 1? Oh, I wrote it as minus 1. It's supposed to say minus. I wrote it wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, it, doesn't it just say, though, minus 1 plus 1? Right? Yeah, I, I copied this down wrong. It's 5x minus 1 down there. 5x minus 1 plus 1 is, z is 5x. It's the, z the ones go to 0. And that cancels. Now can we cancel the 5? Yeah. Why is it okay to cancel the 5 now but not in the first step? Because there's no addition. Can I just ask a question? And it's opposite. 
there's still an x attached to it, it's because of the plus and minus, right? That's why. Right, now we can cancel the fives, and we're left with just x. So are they inverses? Yes. Both composites gave x. So, yes, they are. You want to try one? I have all easy ones on here. Maybe. Let's see if I can find a better one. Yeah. Nope. These are actually really hard, and like I don't understand them, so I think you should make like the whole test just these. Let's find the inverse. So, given a single function, let's find its inverse. Fifth root. I'll write it. Uh, this is a fifth root of three x minus two. Fifth root of 3x minus 2. Okay, let's just follow those steps. What's our first job? Switch. Nope. We need a y. You said that was optional. No, I didn't. I said if needed, yeah. not optional. It's not. Do we <laughs> do we have a y to okay? So read your notes. If it it's says like f of x is like if it says f of x, and then your notes like say also like just y, though, so like then why don't you write it as y? It doesn't say optional. Why do you have to throw a monkey wrench into the notes? <laughs> okay, include. Let's see. If needed. Okay, go erase your notes. <laughs> And say if not already. Andrew. <laughs> what other people could get confused, I just had to clarify. Uh-huh. Okay, so we did that. Now what? Now what? Now what? Switch X and Y. Switch X and Y. Trade places. Okay? Now what? Get y by itself. So this again, this is where the work comes in. Where or how do we get y by itself? How do you get rid of a fifth root? Uh, I mean, fifth power, right? Or cube fifth it. Whatever Angelina said. It's okay. okay? Same. Whoops. Now you got me doing it. Same thing on the other side. Don't forget to balance. Um, this is x to the fifth. What happens to, when we fifth a fifth root? They cancel. That's why we did it. Now what? Plus two. You guys get the idea. Are we solving? What are we doing? Yeah, we're just trying to get get this y by itself. So, I mean, you could say we're solving for y. Divide by 3. So, x to the 5th plus 2 over 3 equals y. Are we done? Uh, no. If you stop there on your quiz, are you done? No. No? What's the last thing? Uh, switch the y to the uh, inverse of that. Is that step optional? Like the last one, apparently? Hold on. Let me... <laughs> I think so. I'm going to tell you about the review. No, exactly. Guys, I do pay attention. This is important. Your quiz will look almost just like this, okay? Same, roughly same length, same structure, like solving and then function stuff. Um, do note on the front, right under where it says name, it says don't forget to verify, and then it says this reminder will not be on the actual exam. In other words, what, well, what does verify mean on the front when you're solving? What does verify mean? Check. Yeah, plug in and check to make sure your answers actually work. 
Okay? It's not going to remind you, so if you forget, you're missing points, because that's part of the process. Uh, we've talked about how to show your check. You don't have to show every step, but you do need to show it plugged in at least and show that it equals. So give me the equal value. Okay? Like let's say you plug it in and 3 equals 3, you would need to show it plugged in and write 3 equals 3. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hopefully. You need to do that, yeah. To verify your solutions aren't extraneous. Okay. <laughs> Lay off the piece. He didn't know you Okay, on the back. On the back. Flip it over. Oh, I just realized again that I need to show you one other thing. But let me tell you this first. So, do you see up at the top it says find the composite functions and S is underlined? It's because I want both f of g and g of f. Um, on your quiz, it will say both on there. It's not just going to have an underline. So it will remind you a little bit more clearly. So, but when you're practicing right now, find both f of g and g of f, just the plain composite. And then find g of f of 4 for both. Does that make sense? Okay. There's one thing that I haven't shown you because I forgot. And that, if we go back to the composite stuff, you probably noticed, if you were looking closely, yesterday, did you see the one that had the dot in between? What do you think that dot means? So multiply, okay? <clears throat> Let's, in this case, f dot g of x, it just means take f and multiply it by g. So it's stuff that we've done, just not in that notation. It's really understanding the notation is all that's new. So then you would just distribute. All right, just multiply everything and combine like terms. So I'll put that real quick on the note back on composite. That, that gets tucked in there. Just when you write it, make sure that you put a closed dot. Don't make it open. Means multiply. F times G. 